Hello everyone, how are you today? Welcome to the YouTube channel Plantastic. Today we are going to focus on the Callus Culture Part 1. Alright, Callus Culture is an undifferentiated cluster of cells which is unorganized. It has irregular mass of parenchymatous tissues with meristematic loci. The new growth will be initiated in meristematic tissues located in callus tissue. Cell and callus culture are more likely to be genetically unstable than those grown as the plantlets through micropropagation. This is because it will develop the cells with abnormal number of chromosomes. However, the plant breeders, especially succulents or other ornamental plants breeders, they prefer callus culture because they want the variegations or the different traits shown by the colors or the size of the plants. On the other hand, micropropagation who want identical clones will avoid this callus culture. Where it can be found? In micropropagation by stem cuttings, the callus are formed at the base of the cutting prior to the root initiation in some species. Commonly, it is observed at the wound of the succulent leaves prior to somatic embryogenesis in their nature. It also can be formed in plant tissue culture, of course, especially at the basal end of the in vitro shoot as it has the open wound or any wound part of the plant. Callus origination Callus can be originated in any in vitro plant part, especially the leaves, because the leaf is the most common organ used in most of the research. The cambium of the older parts can also give rise to callus. Young meristematic tissues are the most suitable as plant to induce the callus. There will be primary callus, which is the callus form from an original as plant and also secondary callus in which the callus was initiated from pieces of tissue dissected from primary callus through cell culture and proliferation. Next, callus initiations can be done by several ways. First, as we know, low osing concentration favors the root initiation. High osing concentration induces the callus formation. The common oocines used in plant tissue culture are IAA, IBA, NAA, 24D, and PCPA. 24D is the most common oocine used in most of the callus induction. Some of the cytokinins also be used to induce the callus, for example, TD6 at high level for some species. Callus initiation also can be induced by certain culture conditions. Callus initiation also can be due to the disturbance in the endogenous levels of the growth regulator caused by infections, insects, microorganisms, or specific genetic recombination. Callus induction also can be induced mechanically, which is through the maceration of the tissue culture. By meshing the in vitro stem tips or meristem with a scalpel, knife, or spatula in aseptic condition. It also can be done by homogenizing in a sterilized blender. The morphology of the callus is varied from plants to plants, as plant to as plant, species to species, condition to condition. Callus from the same as plant may show considerable variation on color, which gives the light or dark color from white, yellow to green. The texture of the callus also will be different in such a way that compact friable, dry, or wet. Chemosynthesis and morphological potential will be different as well. The texture of the callus can be modified by the culture period due to genetic or epigenetic changes. Change of the medium. It also often been possible to isolate different types of the kelly from the stem as plants. The callus proliferation can be done through the periodic subculture on fresh medium, Agitation in suspension culture that inhibits the plantlet's formation while allowing the increase in callus production, in which we are going to discuss in detail in another video. The application of the callus, what can it be done on the callus? First, it acts as a system for various morphogenetic and physiological studies. It can be used to differentiate adventitious shoot formation by using cytokinins through regeneration single cell and suspension culture to produce the secondary metabolites. 
to generate useful somaclonal variation through somatic embryogenesis. The production of polypoidy by trading the callus with cocaicin, which commonly used in ornamental plants. It also can be used as a material for protoplast isolation and fusion. The application of the callus. There are a few types of the callus growth. First, the oocene dependent callus in which the callus initially required oxygen for growth. The callus acquired an irreversible capacity to synthesize excess quantities of oxygen, consequently will become the autotrophic for oxygen, which is called as habituated, in which it can grow independent of exogenous oxygen. There is similar habituation of cultures with respect to cytokinin requirement also been observed. The callus culture may become progressively friable with repeated subcultures on gel medium. The friable callus is highly desirable for rising a fine cell suspension in liquid medium. The friability of callus can be also induced by modifying the growth regulator composition of the medium. Alright, by subculturing the callus, we will have some subculturing hazards. First, there will be several kinds of callus that may arise from the initial explant, each with different morphogenic potential. Different strands of the callus culture have different capability of giving rise to somatic embryos. The timing of the transfer also may be important, which the non-embryogenic callus may grow from the original explant at the expense of competent tissue, which will then be obscure or lost. There will be genetically changes occur throughout the subculture period. Important not in callus culture. The formation of callus might be one of the indications of abnormal growth in plant tissue culture. It is always formed when a culture is experiencing high stress level or wrong hormone was used. There is an interesting fact about callus formation. Electrical stimulation on callus culture is used to induce the shoot differentiation. In a range of 0.1 to 50 microampere for a long period which is around 22 to 30 days. This will eventually promote the callus growth where the callus met the negative pole while the medium acts as the positive pole. This was done by this scientist in the year 1985. Before we end our video, I would like to share the histological determination on regeneration potential. There will be differences in the starch distribution among the cells, in which lower abundance of starch indicated that the cells or tissues are mitotically active and involved in the regeneration process. It can be done by using Lugol's reagent or periodic acid shift past reaction. The embryogenic or meristematic features such as small, isodiametric, as well as dense cytoplasm and large nucleus can be determined by the histological analysis using the acetocarmine or Evans Blue staining. Don't forget to subscribe, share and hit up the notification button for subsequent videos on plant science. You may also find me at the LinkedIn profile for the connection. This is not a sponsored video and I would like to share with every one of you the reference I used in this video. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.